Hello, makers. This month's Makery Craft is a sewing project. We are going to sew an aromatherapy neck pillow filled with flaxseed and lavender petals, something that you can put in the microwave or in the freezer to use hot or cold. Let's get started. For this project, we'll need a sewing machine with a sewing kit, which contains the power cable and pedal, some fabric scissors, thread, and a bobbin. And we have pins, but I prefer to use these clips. Then we'll need some fabric, cut to about 11 inches by 23 inches, and also just one other small piece of test fabric. We've got flaxseed, we'll need about two pounds, some lavender petals, we're using about a quarter cup of this, and some measuring cups. Finally, we'll need a funnel, but I'm just gonna use a sheet of paper rolled up and taped. First thing, we'll thread the machine. Slide off the cap, place the spool of thread on the stem, and make sure the thread tail comes underneath, not over. Then replace the cap. Next, rotate the wheel on the side of the machine until this metal hook pops out of the top. I'll follow the arrow on the machine going underneath this white piece, down underneath, back up, and into that metal hook. Then we'll go straight down, and just above the needle, we'll slide the thread behind this little metal hook, press down the threader, wrap the thread behind these two white plastic hooks, then just reach back and pull the thread the rest of the way through. Now for the bobbin. Pay attention to the diagram to make sure you put the bobbin in correctly. We want to make sure the tail of the thread is coming out to the left, not the right. Remove the cover. Place the bobbin in. And feed the thread through that little metal hook. and replace the cover. Now the last step in threading is to pull up the bobbin thread. To do this, grab on the thread that's coming out of the needle, pull it off to the left, and hold onto it as you rotate the wheel on the side of the machine backward toward you. We're rotating this counterclockwise. Then pull that same piece of thread off to the left, slowly until you see this little loop pop out right above the presser foot. Grab onto that loop and pull that all the way until you have just two tails of thread and pull them straight back behind the machine. Then we'll use this little blade to cut those short. Now let's set up the rest of the machine. We'll plug in the power cable and then slide out this little reference card to see what settings we're going to use. For this project, we just need one stitch, a simple straight stitch. These are all the settings that you'll need for a straight stitch. All of these symbols translate to the following here. Stitch selection is one, that's the little orange illustration. Presser foot A, and that's the presser foot that's already in the machine, so we don't need to change that. Thread tension should be between four and six. L is for length, stitch length should be 2.5, and W for width, which means stitch width should be five. Let's do it. So stitch selection, I'll rotate this to position one. Stitch width, I'll turn that up to five. Thread tension, we'll bring this to four. Stitch length, 2.5, so just that dot in between two and three. Now let's turn on the machine and run a test. We'll grab our small scrap fabric, fold it in half, and put the creased end in first. Slide that up to the edge of the presser foot, flip the presser foot down, and we'll use the pedal to run it. Once you get toward the end, you can lift up your foot, then lift the presser foot, and let's pull the fabric out and take a look. So I've got a nice clean stitch here. I don't see any 
really long loops. The bobbin thread didn't get all bunched up. Everything looks clean and good. If there's anything wrong with yours, just check with the Makery staff, and we'll help you make sure everything's set up properly. Now let's do this for real. Notice that the fabric has a right side and a wrong side. The right side has the pattern on it. The wrong side has no pattern. We're going to fold this in half long ways with the right sides together. Bring it over to the heat press, and we'll iron in our creases. After that, we'll clip the ends of the fabric together. So find the two loose ends, the open ends, not the creased end. And we'll clip those open ends together so that everything stays in the right position while we're sewing. Now the proper way to use these is to have the clear side facing down. And just put one every few inches. Now let's quickly talk about seam allowance. Seam allowance is how much space you have between the edge of the fabric and where you're sewing. For this project, we're going to do about a 3 8 inch seam allowance. And for this project, seam allowance really doesn't matter too much, so if you go a little bit more or a little bit less, that's just fine. We're just covering the basics here. Now whenever you begin and end a seam, it's best to backstitch. This locks in the stitch so that it stays secure. To backstitch, sew the first few stitches, then stop, hold down the backstitch button, so backwards three or four stitches, and then continue forward until you get to the end. Now I'm starting with the short side. Once we get down to the corner, stop when it's about three eighths of an inch from the edge. And then here's how we turn that corner. Notice that the needle is still in the fabric. If yours is not, if it's still elevated, just rotate that wheel on the side until the needle goes back down. Then we'll lift up the presser foot, Rotate our fabric 90 degrees. We're just pivoting on the needle. Line it up and put that presser foot back down. And now we're just going to do one long straight stitch all the way to the end. And just remove the clips as you go. And it's important to note that what I'm doing with my hands here is not pushing the fabric into the sewing machine. The sewing machine will pull the fabric by itself. What I'm doing is I'm just gently pressing down on the fabric to keep it taut. Now we're just near the end, so I'll backstitch, lift up my presser foot, then I'll wind the needle to the highest position. Let's pull our fabric out and take a look. And this stitch looks good. Next, take a look at your project and snip any loose threads. And then we'll go ahead and clip our corners. Make sure you don't cut so close that you cut through the seam you just sewed. And now we'll turn it inside out and make sure you flip your corners out as well. And that's why we clipped the corners before we turned it inside out. That helps make sure that there's not too much fabric in the corners so that they end up straight. Now we've got one more stitch to do, but first let's fill up our bag. We'll fill it about halfway with the flaxseed. It comes to about two pounds, a little bit less than two pounds. Then we'll do one quarter cup of lavender petals. Once we're done with that, let's get ready to sew it shut. This will be the one visible stitch. We'll grab that opening, fold the edges over about a half an inch or an inch or so. In my case, because I have this white edge, I want to make sure I fold it in so far that those white edges are not visible. I'll clip this in place, then back to the sewing machine to finish up. Then same thing as before, I'll backstitch to start. Sew a straight stitch all the way to the end. Backstitch to seal it up. And let's see how we did. So my stitch looks a little bit rough, but it works just fine. I'm just going to mix this up a little bit so I get the lavender petals mixed in with the flaxseed. And now to use this, you can place it in the freezer for at least 30 minutes to get it cool. To use it warm, microwave it for 15 seconds at a time until it's warm enough. That's it for this month's Makery Craft. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.